This might not be a typical video they expect of me, but I thought I would start off 2023 on a fresh start and to clean up the energy I need going into the new year. This isn't my first video here on YouTube, but I feel like it's my first video that I'm posting out here as my reborn self. I'll explain more in a bit later. If you're creative, facing some mental creative struggles, for example like self-doubt or always constantly feel like you're not good enough, then watch on. This video might help you. So for those who are new here, as a quick introduction, I've been doing sugar flowers and cake decorating for the past 10 years in many forms. So I've done dessert tables, creative cakes, uh, wedding cakes, I've taught workshops, and I find it very important to be sharing about how to embrace a healthy mindset behind doing creative work because I've seen how much or how big a difference it has made for me in my creative journey. And just as a disclaimer, I do not need to do this but I just want to do this for myself and maybe for you who are watching and for future generations to come. If this video helps you renew and refresh your energy for 2023 or the new year ahead whenever you're watching this, then that will be a great bonus. One of the most important or pushing factors as to why I wanted to do this video is because over the years as I teach students, talk to people in the creative industry, held workshops, did my own reflections, and whenever I share any struggles as a creative and my learnings around it, I realised that I'm not alone and so many people resonate with it and they always thank me for sharing my story because it has helped them so much. It really touches me knowing that sharing something from my heart brings so much comfort and hope for people and that really motivated me to want to share this on a larger platform with my own story. So the three main focal points that will guide today's video flow are also the things that I want to address moving into the new year. Number one will be my biggest mental struggle in running a creative business with social media. Number two, the loss of identity that led to the need for external validation and how is that dangerous. And number three, what got me out of it and how it has gifted me this brand new energy and zest moving forward. This might seem shocking to most of you um, since this is a relatively new platform that I'm actually only getting used to but actually over the years I've been speaking pretty openly on other social platforms like Instagram, to my email list, during in-person workshops and in smaller coaching groups. And I, I realize you will find that inner voice the more you do something. I feel like a lot of people, they always say that they cannot find their voice. It's because they haven't started trying. So like they are just stuck at ground zero and they say like, I cannot do this like me, like in the past, like I say, I cannot paint, I cannot do anything. But like the moment you started doing, then you started to see your footprints like everywhere in everything yes. you do. So <laughs> it's quite magical. I truly believe that the the path, our path, it's meant to be. So oh yes. Even if it's bad and something bad happens, it was supposed to happen because it also uh, taught us something, right? So yes, I, I wouldn't. And another main reason why I wanted to do this is because having run my own creative business for the past ten years, I learned and understood that being a creative, or a business owner, or any role that you take on. It is not only about what you do on the outside, which is like the amazing achievements and work you have done, but it is also about what breeds that, you know, like what breeds those achievements, which is the inside. And if the inside is not clear and sorted out, it will bleed into everything that you do and it will affect your creative journey or any journey you're on, like how it has affected mine and many that I know of. Most of you will probably know me from Instagram because that is where I built my business from scratch over the past 8 to 10 years, literally when Instagram just started. Um, and over the years, I feel like I owe so much of my success to Instagram as a platform that I gradually allow the Instagram identity to take over me as a person, the real identity. And I didn't even know that that has happened to me until I left my studio in 2021 uh, where I felt like I couldn't find any joy or fulfillment in making wedding cakes anymore because I've done so for the past 8 years. I felt like the season was up, but in moving on, I actually didn't know who I am or who I was. And what can I fully focus on next? Making that decision of moving out, it was so, so scary without having a solid plan for what is to come next. But I knew that something needed to change 
and although like my mind wasn't ready, my body made the move. The mind just needed some time to catch up. It was only through a few coaching calls with my life coach in early 2022 that I realized why all of this was happening and why I was feeling that way. Basically, I've packed my entire identity to my business's identity. What does that mean? That means I simply couldn't see who I am beyond what the business has been doing for the past eight years. I could not see a new way of working because that's how my business has been thriving and surviving for the last eight years. That was how my business was so successful and I didn't know how to move into a new season that deep down I know will serve me more. So for as long as I can remember, I'm always behind that one label of I'm a business owner or I'm a cake designer or I'm a sugar flower crafter etc and the list goes on and on because I feel like my business success and I thought my own success was latched on to how well the business was doing. I couldn't introduce myself as Winifred without a label behind which explains why I always feel so stuck when I had to do that because I feel like I am definitely more than just a label. And I think being on social media makes it very difficult. It feels like you almost need to have a label for yourself. Like, that's how people recognize you. And it dawned on to me that it was a more serious problem because over the years, as my students flew into Singapore for like in-person workshops and whatnot, they were actually, I wouldn't say shocked, but maybe surprised to find out that how my online identity is so different from my real life identity. Like online, I'm almost like perfect, pristine, I'm someone who they will never make mistakes. And of course I do, I make mistakes, I'm a human. Um, and like, um, I'm, I seem very serious, unapproachable, you know. But like my real life personality is that I'm pretty bubbly, I laugh most of the time. And um, I love sharing and I'm pretty friendly. So this entire experience that they shared with me really made me think. And this also reminded me about how thankful I am to still have all these real life interactions and to remember who I am as a person without, you know, social media. So I ended up pegging my own identity to my business's identity. And what that means in short is if the business is doing well and the numbers of likes and engagements are high, then I am successful. And if the business is not doing well, then I'm a terrible person. That is a summary, but you get the drift. And God knows how long I've been stuck in this entire cycle, which is so unhealthy because my mood teeters drastically from day to day and sometimes from an hour to another hour. I was basically leaning into everyone um, on how I feel and how I am as a person. I started tying my own self-worth to everything I see on social media the number of likes, the engagements, the metrics. And that was the only way I kind of know how to measure myself. For example, if this certain photo didn't get a certain amount of engagement, then I will feel so shattered as a person. And I think the saddest thing um, I realized about this entire episode is that I wasn't like this eight years ago. You know, like when I first started, I was full of energy. I didn't really care about what other people think of me. I was very focused on doing what makes me happy and sharing it with the world. Or oh, that was the original energy that I have deep down within me. And I didn't even know when it started going downhill. And I realized the thing about external validation is that it is never enough. You're always constantly chasing for it, but you will never get it because it will never be enough. Like once you have this, you want a higher, number of things you know it just keeps increasing like you're never contented but it was it was a climax but a very short climax like when i hit 1 million subscribers on youtube i was like yes i did it and i felt good for the day and then the next day i was like okay i guess 2 million and then i hit 2 million and i was like woo i was like okay clearly this is not working because how many millions do i have to chase in order for me to be happy so that's why it's important to fall in love with the process, not the And it always seems so honorable to be recognized as someone in the industry, right? Like you worked hard and you have all these achievements and you want to be recognized. 
But if you're not aware or honest with yourself, what kind of energy is behind or driving all these achievements that you're getting, the temptation to keep up to all these external expectations will be a very unhealthy one, which was what I went through. And I guess the difficult thing is like it always seems so like you know glitzy and glamorous, right? Like on the outside, like you're recognized, people know who you are. Um, but I feel that's like on the outside. You know like how like chefs, they work really hard for like that one Michelin star where they actually sacrifice so many things like time off with family, health and whatnot, like just for that one label. Or like how some authors never wrote a book again after they won some best-selling novel award because they are so afraid that they will never reach the peak of their careers again and that might be something they are afraid to face. And that's the exact reason why I never like competitions or like awards because I feel like they confine people to a space, to a title or even to an external validation. And I just want to be clear here, there is a huge, huge difference between being nourished by it and needing it. Being nourished means you take it in and you know that it adds on to your worth. But needing it is without it, you feel worthless. And that is the main difference. I remember telling my life coach last year that whenever I create a flower or an art piece, I'll feel so proud of myself. I'll literally smile at it the whole day and I will keep thinking about, wow, well, how can I then create more of such happiness? You know, it's the kind of energy that naturally ripples and creates another wave of happy energy. And that has always been driving my creative work uh, when I was away from social media. And yeah, so that energy all comes from within. But the moment I posted it on social media and the likes weren't as high as expected, you see, keeping to a certain previous expectation again, I felt completely deflated. And I didn't understand why I feel completely deflated until my life coach explained to me that because I was trying to keep up to this perfect standard that Winifred has built over the years, uh, how Bill has recognized her over the years and it you know it just happened so subtly like inside like my body it wasn't you know like every day I tell myself I needed to do this because I needed validation you know it happened very subtly and I think that's the scary part but I'm really thankful that I had a call with my life coach which really snapped me back to who I originally was the Winifred who started making sugar flowers and cakes just simply because she loves creating beautiful things that 19 year old me and that is enough more than enough I am enough simply by being external validation doesn't define you internal validation does I hit my rock bottom in 2021 and it was a point where no matter how much people were texting me, telling me how amazing my works are, how they really look up to me and you know, like all sorts of like really positive message. I just simply could not feel like any of it. Like I couldn't see myself or who I am. I couldn't feel any happiness and that was how hopeless I felt. Yeah. Like I couldn't even celebrate myself when people are celebrating me. I felt so empty on the inside that nothing, like literally nothing can fill it up. And that was when I knew I needed to seek help. And I guess that's what happened when we don't stop and reflect, right? So like for the past eight to nine years, I've been just like going, 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 like at a speed that I think I'm about to crash. But I didn't understand the importance of like rest and recharging and the concept that there are high and low seasons. I think I just didn't even embrace or like understood what the low seasons were for. And because I was constantly chasing for high energy from outside, I kept letting external validation or the numbers like lead me on my journey. The biggest shift that really got me all my suffering is really tuning inwards, you know, like inner attunement or like self-acceptance. 
When I let go of who I thought I was supposed to be or needed to be, I simply revert back to who I truly am. And that really changed my life. So through this entire year of intentional self-work, I realized that all I need to be is to be real, to be connected with who I am on the inside, and to let go of the old self-limiting beliefs of like who I need to be, should be, supposed to be, you know, all those stuff. My life coach actually helped me look back on my journey that all the times that when I was just truly myself were also the times that I blossomed the most. And those are real concrete data to look at and to feel for myself. He made me remember what were fueling the energy behind everything that works and were joyful for me. And I just suddenly get connected with my real self there. I love to craft, I love to share my works with everyone, I love to connect with people, and I love to help people. And realizing that I lost all of that due to all the reasons I mentioned earlier really saddens me. Like, it really broke my heart. This was a moment during the call that I realized that when I listened to my inner voice, the real me, there were also the times that I performed the best and was the happiest. Listen to myself and do what I want to do, right? It also performed the best. Hala, <laughs> then you already got evidence, la. hello. Why you, why you don't look at the evidence that you're going to look at other evidence? <laughs> yeah. I want to be really honest here, it's not easy at all for me to share such vulnerable parts of my journey on such a wide platform, like a worldwide web, you know, like everyone will see it. But I think if there's something that I really learned in my entire journey of doing self-work is that there is true strength in being vulnerable. Like when you look into what is not working, you need a lot of courage to do that. And the journey can be really tough, but like now looking back, I think it's completely worth it because it has helped me remove so many roadblocks that I've placed for myself that I didn't even know I placed for myself. And I totally blocked out like all my potential and basically led me to many months of hiding and pretending, I guess, to be someone that I'm not. Yeah. And yeah, I wanted to share this because like I'm human and not perfect and I want people to know that too. Like I feel like there's just so much external or societal pressure on us that it might just be imaginary, you know? Uh, or they might be real, but then like how can we cope with it? Like I want people to know that if they're facing this, they're not alone and there is a way out. So I did further reflections and therapy because I wanted to find out what was causing me to go downhill and these were the two main things I discovered. Number one, I didn't want to accept or face the bad or ugly parts of me because I was just naturally a very positive person and it's kind of tied to that. And number two, I always buried myself or criticized myself shortly after I've done the work that I'm really so proud of. I just constantly think that like, I'm not enough or I'm not good enough. And the two things that I did for myself throughout this entire shift towards healing that really allowed me to come back to who I am were number one, accepting myself for all the bad and ugly parts and to know that I am enough and I do not need to be perfect. And secondly, I learned to celebrate myself through my little achievements and use the energy to grow instead of berating myself for more growth. And you see, the growth action is the same, but the energy behind the growth is completely different. And let me explain that both in more detail. Obviously, this is not something that you and I can change overnight. It also took me an entire year to figure out how to let go of old self-limiting beliefs and to embrace a new set of serving beliefs. But I just want to share that it is possible. The truth is, I am simply me, just by being. For all the good and the bad, I am like a spectrum. Like, I am not a shiny object placed on a pedestal waiting to be envied or admired. I am human and I make mistakes. And I'm not confined to doing just one kind of work or stay behind one label. No matter what I do, I am still me. 
Yes, those things that I do succeeded because of the energy I put in. But it would be so silly for me to think that I'm confined to the things that I've done and have succeeded in the past and not allow myself to explore more and lean into what I can do for myself in the future. One thing that I'm very very clear of that I never forgot is doing all this creative work and helping people in their journey really makes me like come alive. So why do I need to leave behind that one label, right? Like that, I don't know, successful or perfect Winifred behind Winifred Christine Cake and the pressure of needing to keep up to that label because all these years, that is how people get to know me. In the end, slowly and dangerously, and I would say very subconsciously, it made me believe that just by loving to create beautiful things and sharing it with people that I love, it's not enough. But the question is, not enough to who? The thing is, we are not robots. We have our highs and our lows, the good and the bad parts, and we, we move through life in seasons. So there's no one particular achievement or thing that you do on the outside that will define the whole of who you are on the inside. When we make mistakes, it's normal. When we forget things, it's normal. <laughs> I don't know how else to put this, but I just feel like there's this constant expectation of people wanting us to be perfect and you know, flawless and glamorous and you know, the list goes on and on. There are days where we are productive and there are days that we are not. Like I feel perfectionism is just an illusion. It actually makes humans feel worse about themselves after a while because of the impossible standard to keep up to that certain pristine image. I used to think my negative energy was very unproductive so I never really wanted to look at it. But that was just me measuring myself on how it will affect my work productivity and again, you know, via external validation. One thing that I learned last year that I really like is there is no shadow without light. Like both need to exist together to form who we are. Who knew by having a closer examination of my bad parts with so much curiosity and openness can lead me to so much healing. To accepting myself for who I am and to regain the energy that I had before all this went downhill. Like I remembered that I do not need to be perfect or famous or however people like to define it. I just needed to be me. I'm just happy creating things that makes my heart feel happy or makes my heart dance, which is crafting things, sharing with people and helping them in their journey. And that is enough. I did quite a few social media detoxes over the years and you see that's the thing, when you quieten down external noises, your inner voice becomes the loudest and the clearest. Those moments reminded me that true happiness stems from just by being, you know, it comes from within. And for me, that means that I can silently create beautiful things and I'm just so fueled by it. I'm, it makes me so happy. Because the energy of creating these beautiful things comes from a very core part of me which is the internal fire and energy that I have. I didn't need to or want to create so I can be the best or so that I can shine. I simply want and love to create these things because I love it. Like I love the process, I love the outcome that it brings me and like that is enough. I learned to celebrate these little wins and little things accumulate. When you have the energy, it naturally spreads without forcing. I think a lot of people, including me in the past, didn't realize that this transfer of energy happens so naturally when you are aligned on the inside. And like when you're doing what your heart wants you to do. It is an energy that is so magnetizing and you will get to attract the people that you want to attract. I think so many of us focus on external validation or rewards because that's technically how like the society works and rewards us for, right? Like instant gratification, boost of serotonin, but we forgot that what happens on the outside happens because of what internal energy we bring to it. So looking inwards, that is how I found my inner strength and joy that will continue to lead the way for all the future things that I do. My life coach made me remember that all my best work stems from when I truly understand who I am on the inside and like 
or like in another words, I was very clear on what kind of energy I was bringing to the table and that all came from within me. That didn't need any external validation. So fast forward to this point, after a year, I'm really very happy that I've done the work, you know, the tough work and seek help and get the help I need. And I am not plagued by the mental load of having to look at engagements and constantly checking about numbers and seeking external validation. What I look for now is like real life connections, you know, online and offline. Like whenever someone drops me a message, it is a human to human heart interaction. And I treasure that a lot more than just looking at a number of likes. And that's because I'm energetically aligned on the inside. And that is a big exciting shift for me. Creating beautiful works energizes me. Connecting with people energizes me. Sharing my works energizes me. And I'm so happy that I can finally be me again without having to worry about what others would want me to be or like what I would expect other people to think of me or like who I thought I needed to be. Like, I can see it so clearly now. So I just wanted to end off this video with one last thing that, you know, education and learning how to craft beautiful things that having a skill set is great but if you do not understand what is the energy that drives that, it is not sustainable in the long run. For example, you might end up being influenced by social media because you are not very sure what's inside here and you might end up with unhealthy comparisons which is mentally very harmful. But if you understand your inner motivations and why you do what you do or how you feel when you do your best works or even just your daily work, you can then constantly recreate the energy over and over again in the long run, unaffected by external pressure because your internal compass is so firm and strong. I feel like energy is a huge theme here, like people can feel it. When you're real, they can feel it too. Nothing, like really nothing can beat living your own truth. So if you're watching this and all the way under here, I thank you so much for your time. I hope this speaks to you and if you're going through any of what I've gone through, I hope this brings you some comfort and hope that you're not alone. There are high and low seasons and there is always a way out. I think once you sit down, spend the time to self-reflect and ask yourself these questions and work towards inner attunement, you will have a lot more clarity and energy in knowing how to strive forward in your best way. Here's my favourite quote that I've learned last year and I think it's really worth sharing here. You cannot get from others what you cannot give yourself. Everything starts from within. So this year onward, you'll definitely be seeing a lot more of what I've always been wanting to share. But that was too in the past. Here on YouTube, as I step into my new season, I am free to be who I want to be and what I want to do without having to fulfill past expectations. Every day is a brand new day for me to keep an open mind and to continue exploring. I will still continue to share more updates on Instagram, so don't forget to follow me there as well. Sending you guys lots of love, courage, and wishing you all the best. I hope you see yourself both every day and know that you are enough. See you in the next video.